Howdy, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to balance the following equation of aluminum that reacts with hydrochloric acid, produces aluminum chloride, and hydrogen gas. So the first thing is I always like to place in little lines here to the left of each particular molecule or atom that will represent the location of the coefficients I'm going to plug in. The next thing I do is I kind of just start working with the first element that I see. Okay, I don't really create a table or anything like that. I think it's a lot just easier this way. So we have one aluminum on the left-hand side. That's where the subscript comes, uh, comes into play, right? And we also have one aluminum because the subscript is a one over there on the right-hand side. So that's balanced, okay? So now we're gonna move on. So the next element I see here is hydrogen. Now hydrogen exists in this compound on the left and it also exists in this compound on the right, which I like to balance, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna save hydrogen to balance for the end. And why? Well, I know that if I place a number here, Okay, it'll only affect, meaning coefficient, it'll only affect the hydrogen's value, all right? So I'm gonna be a little strategic about this. I'm not gonna do the hydrogen next for that reason, because I know that if I can maybe balance the chlorine next, and then I have to go back and balance the hydrogen, I can place in whatever coefficient I want over here, and it'll only affect the hydrogen, and then the equation will be totally balanced, okay? I don't have to keep going back and forth. So just thinking ahead a little bit, let's balance chlorine next. So I have one chlorine on the left, three chlorines on the right. So I need to place in a coefficient of three there. Okay, so now I have three hydrochloric acid molecules. In each one of them, there's one chlorine. So therefore I have three chlorines. All right, now let's go back to the hydrogen. Once you place this coefficient in, you must take it into account. So in other words, you don't have one hydrogen here on the left side anymore. You have three hydrogens. You have to think multiplicatively, three times one. Okay, so I'm gonna set up a little math equation here. I'm gonna say three hydrogens on the left somehow has to equal two hydrogens on the right. Now, obviously this is not a true statement, okay? But now this is what I was talking about before. I wanna place a coefficient here, so I'm gonna label it X. And remember, we said that whatever, whatever this coefficient is, we multiply it by the subscript to get the total, right? So my X here is really gonna go next to the two because it's multiplied by the two. And I wanna find out what this missing value is so that this equation balances. So watch how simple this algebra is. This is just three over two. Now you're like, yeah, the algebra was simple, but you gave me a fraction. So what the heck are you doing? It seems complicated, but it's really gonna be very easy from here, watch. So now technically this equation is fully balanced, fully, fully balanced, but you can't have three halves of a molecule. What does that even mean? That's like having three halves of a person. Can't happen, okay, either you have a whole person, right, or two whole people, three whole people. You can't have three halves of a person, all right? Um, so what we need to do now is we need to look at the denominator. That's why I leave it in fractional form. Whatever this denominator is, is what you're gonna multiply every single coefficient now by in order to obtain your balanced equation, all right? So you can plug in little one placeholders for now and then just multiply it by the two because this was the denominator value. Okay, so one times two is simply going to be two. Okay, so then it's gonna be three times two. That's gonna simply be six. One times two now, right? That's simply going to be two. Did I say one times six? I meant one times two, I'm not even sure what I said. And then three halves times two, this is always gonna work. The denominator will always just cancel. It's just going to be whatever numerator value it was, and that's going to be a three. And there you now have it. That's your balance equation. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you can, like, subscribe, tell your friends. we got thousands of other videos out there. Check out our channel. We'd love to help you with more. Take care.